September 2, 2019 Strong winds from Hurricane Dorian blow the tops of trees and brush while whisking up water from the surface of a canal that leads to the sea, located behind the brush at top, seen from the balcony of a hotel in Freeport, at Bahama, Bahamas, Monday, Sept. 2, 2019 Hurricane Dorian hovered over the Bahamas on Monday, pummeling the islands with a fearsome Category 4 assault that forced even rescue crews to take shelter until the onslaught passes. App photo, Ramon Espinosa, Hurricane Dorian stall over the Bahamas has led to unprecedented devastation, according to one official, and the destruction of more than 13,000 homes, according to the Red Cross, and at least five confirmed deaths. We have received catastrophic damage, Minister of Foreign Affairs and North Abaco MP Darren Henfield said. We have reports of casualties. We have reports of bodies being seen. We cannot confirm those reports until we go and confirm for ourselves. Public officials are advising residents who need rescue to call or WhatsApp their location. As of midday Monday, authorities said they had received over 2,000 rescue requests to an emergency WhatsApp number. Residents who are moving to their home's highest areas are being told to take a tool strong enough to break through the roof as storm surges may rise to 25 feet. One resident recorded video of waves lapping against the home's roof. There's houses that are torn apart. There's tree limbs in the road. Bruce Sawyer, a resident on Abaco Island in the Bahamas, told Cecilia Vega of Good Morning America on Monday. We couldn't even evacuate right now if we needed to. It looks like a bomb went off. Latoy Williams, while recording footage of his submerged front yard, said simply, God be with us. God be with us. God be with us, video he posted on Twitter showed choppy flood waters lapping up against the side and windows of his Freeport home, powerful winds lashing palm trees. He estimated the water was six feet deep. My front yard. The storm, which left many communities underwater, made landfall on three different islands with punishing sustained winds of 185 miles per hour and gusts that reached speeds of 225 miles per hour. Late Sunday night, the first fatality blamed on Dorian was confirmed in Abaco. Lachino McIntosh, a young boy, drowned and his sister remains missing, according to the Bahamas press. There are conflicting reports about McIntosh's age. He is believed to be either seven or eight years old. Lachino McIntosh, Twitter, the Bahamas Press, all I can say is that my daughter called from Abaco and said that her son, my grandson, is dead, the boy's distraught grandmother Ingrid McIntosh told Eyewitness News in the Bahamas. That's it. I don't know what really happened. I think she said he drowned. She continued through tears, saying, my grandson is dead, and adding that she'd just seen the little boy two days ago. He said, Grandma, I love you. On Monday afternoon, Bahamas Prime Minister Hubert Minnis announced that the death toll had risen to at least five, according to the Associated Press. However, many fear that the number will continue to rise in the coming days. The Bahamas Press reported that there was a growing wall of residents frantically looking for word of loved ones who they could not contact. The paper also painted an apocalyptic report of the aftermath in Abaco after the island was pummeled by Dorian. Reporters from the Bahamas Press described the devastation they witnessed in Abaco. The place is a disaster, no business is operable and bodies are floating around Big Cat. The concern is nobody knows how many people died, and they feel when the water subsides some bodies will be washed out to sea. It's a massive, massive disaster for the Bahamas, Matt Cochran, International Federation of the Red Cross, told AccuWeather. He added, as we talk about the Bahamas, and that's important, we're also thinking of potential future impact on the United States. 
Maybe as many as 19 million people live in the potential path of the storm. By Monday afternoon, Dorian had stalled about 105 miles east of West Palm Beach, Florida, and only 25 miles east of Freeport in Grand Bahama Island. Dorian weakened slightly to Category 4 strength, with maximum sustained winds dropping to 155 miles per hour and then down to 145, but the storm was beginning to expand in size, meaning it's still an extremely dangerous hurricane. In Freeport on Grand Bahama Island, residents hunkered down in a church that was being used as a makeshift shelter. Photos and videos surfacing on social media began to reveal a peek at what the devastation on the small islands looks like. Toppled trees, downed power lines, flooding in the streets, and severe structural damage to homes were a theme in the photos and videos that emerged. App Photo, Garrett Fisher, U.S. Coast Guard Photo by Petty Officer First Class A Locally, Coast Guard Air Crews and Health Service Technicians are briefed at Coast Guard Air Station Clearwater before a C-130 flight to Andros Island in preparation for Hurricane Dorian response. U.S. Coast Guard Photo by Petty Officer First Class A Locally, the Coast Guard pre-stages and relocates personnel and assets to be able to have a rapid post-storm response. Rich Dallas, UPI worker covers windows on a historic home with plywood in preparation for Hurricane Dorian in Charleston, South Carolina. Rich Dallas, UPI workers attach hurricane cloth to the historic federal courthouse in preparation for Hurricane Dorian in Charleston, South Carolina. ABC News, photo, ABC News. This aerial photo taken over Somerville, South Carolina, on Sept. 2. Shows a long line of traffic extending out for miles on Interstate 26. Traffic is all going in one direction with not a car in sight on the opposite side as residents flee Hurricane Dorian. Twitter, SCDPS. In an effort to help make evacuations from Hurricane Dorian easier, officials in SC. Reverse traffic on one side of Interstate 26 so both sides of the road will go in one direction on Sept. 2 as residents flee Hurricane Dorian. Strong winds from Hurricane Dorian blow the tops of trees and brush while whisking up water from the surface of a canal that leads to the sea, located behind the brush at top, seen from the balcony of a hotel in Freeport, at Bahama, Bahamas, Monday, Sept. 2, 2019. App photo, Ramon Espinosa, app photo, Ramon Espinosa, a baby, sleeps inside a church that was opened up as a shelter for residents who will wade out Hurricane Dorian in Freeport on Grand Bahama, Bahamas, Sunday, Sept. 1, 2019. Tim Allen, App A Road is flooded during the passing of Hurricane Dorian in Freeport, at Bahama, Bahamas, Monday, September 2, 2019. App photo, Tim Allen, Ramon Espinosa, App strong winds move the palms of the palm trees at the first moment of the arrival of Hurricane Dorian in Freeport, at Bahama, Bahamas, Sunday Sept. 1, 2019. AP photo, Ramon Espinosa, AP photo, Ramon Espinosa, a child evacuated from a nearby quay due to the danger of floods drags his suitcase when he arrives on a ship at the port before the arrival of Hurricane Dorian in Sweden. 31, 2019. AP photo, Ramon Espinosa, a man stands on a store. 1, 2019. App photo, Ramon Espinosa, Anastasia Makey, 43, far right, looks at her phone as she and her family sits on cots with other residents inside a church that was opened up as a shelter as they weighed out Hurricane Dorian in Freeport on Grand Bahama, Bahamas, Sunday, Sept. 1, 2019. AP photo, Jacqueline Martin, President Donald Trump, left, listens as Kenneth Graham, director of NOAA. 1, 2019, in Washington. John Rau, app Matt Rora loads sandbags in the back of his vehicle for his home in preparation for Hurricane Dorian Friday, August. 30, 2019, in Flagler Beach, Flower. 
Bryn Anderson app shoppers wait in long lines at Costco Thursday, August 29, 2019 in Davie, Fla, as they stock up on supplies ahead of Hurricane Dorian. App photo, Bryn Anderson, Marcus Lim, app store shelves are empty of bottled water as residents buy supplies in preparation for Hurricane Dorian, in Doral, Fla, Thursday, July 29, 2019. The U.S. National Hurricane Center says Dorian could hit the Florida coast over the weekend as a major hurricane. App photo, Marcus Lim, app photo, Ramon Espinosa, a woman carries a girl in her arms after being evacuated from a nearby cay due to the danger of floods after arrive on a ship at the port before the arrival of Hurricane Dorian in Sweetings Cay, at Bahama, Bahamas, Saturday, August 31, 2019. Ian says NOAA, NOAA's Hurricane Hunters flew into the eye of Hurricane Dorian Sunday morning on Sept. 1. Snapping photos of a view of the stadium effect eye wall from their plane Kermit. Ian says NOAA, a view of the top of Hurricane Dorian's eye wall in what's called the stadium effect. Twitter, Nick Haig, NASA astronaut, Nick Haig, took this picture from Hurricane Dorian seen from the International Space Station, the eye of Dorian's relentless impacts continued to be felt across the Northern Islands on Monday morning. The Bahamas press reported that Grand Bahama International Airport was inundated with at least five feet of water. In addition to some places in the Bahamas seeing up to 30 inches of rain, severe storm surge could be devastating. Accu the forecasters say Dorian will begin to drift to the northwest on Monday, slowly moving away from the northern Bahamas, though dangerous hurricane conditions will continue across Grand Bahama through Monday before conditions begin to gradually improve Monday night into Tuesday. This prolonged period of very strong wind, heavy rain and inundating storm surge will be capable of producing catastrophic damage across Grand Bahama. Forecasters expect the storm to stay just offshore and move parallel up along the Florida coast and then shift eastward and do the same along the coast of the Carolinas. Dorian proved to be a historic hurricane, the strongest ever during modern record-keeping to make landfall in the Bahamas and, with sustained 185 mph winds, it's now the second strongest hurricane, by wind speed, ever recorded in the Atlantic Basin. Dorian now stands behind only Hurricane Allen, the strongest storm ever recorded in the Atlantic Basin. Allen thundered over the Gulf of Mexico in August 1980 and reached sustained wind speeds of 190 miles per hour before making landfall near the U.S.-Mexico border. Hurricane Dorian made its initial landfall at Elbow K. Abacos, in the Bahamas. The Eye of Dorian then made a second landfall on Great Abaco Island near Marsh Harbor in the Bahamas. The third landfall came later on Sunday night with the eye encroaching the eastern end of Grand Bahama Island. Maximum sustained winds were 185 miles per hour during the first two landfalls, dropping to 180 miles per hour for the third. Gusts of 225, as Aki Weather Extreme Meteorologist Reed Timmer pointed out, were equivalent to the winds of an EF4 tornado. The hurricane was devastating and seems to have left a lasting effect on the psyche of even someone who has become storm-worn over the years. Abico resident Bruce Sawyer summed up the sentiment in the Good Morning America interview like this, I was never scared of storms before. But this time I was terrified. Additional reporting by AccuWeather staff writers Chaffin Mitchell, Adriana Navarro, Mark Puglio, and John Roach. Related, Life Dorian leaves at least five dead in the Bahamas, millions ordered to evacuate in U.S. As frightening an eye as you will ever see, very close call for Florida's Hurricane Dorian looms off the coast Atlantic Basin popping to life with tropical activity, drawing attention of AccuWeather meteorologists report to typo let's blog ads. Why?